we're going to be going through the parietal bone. So I'm just going to turn our skull to the side here. The parietal bone, there's two of them. There's a left and a right. So this right in this area right here is known as the parietal bone. So again, we're going to describe all of those outer borders and what bones it meets up with. So in the front, as we previously discussed in a video, this is the frontal bone. And where this parietal and frontal bone meet all along here, this is known as your coronal suture. So that's our front border. On the top aspect of the skull, we have a suture running all the way down the center. This is known as your sagittal suture. So with our left and right parietal bones meeting in the middle at this sagittal suture. And then towards the posterior aspect, this is known as the occipital bone. And we have another suture where the parietal meets the occipital bone, and this is known as your lambdoid suture. So all along here. So those are the kind of anterior, posterior, and midline. Along the side, we have this parietal bone coming down and meeting the sphenoid, which is just underneath kind of the spring in my finger here. And this is actually a named area where multiple bones all meet up. So we have frontal and we have sphenoid and parietal and temporal. And this right here is known as terion. Spelled with a P, terion. And then as we head towards the back, we have a meeting of the temporal bone, the occipital bone, and this again parietal bone. So right in this location, this is known as a sterion, right in here. So those are a few of those meeting points. A couple other things to point out. In the back, where the parietals and the occipital bone meet, this is known as lambda. And towards the front, where the frontal bone meets the two parietals, this is known as bregma. Okay, so we've kind of described all the borders. There is not a lot of bony landmarks when it comes to the parietal bone. So I'm just going to point out the main one on the outside. And as previously discussed in the frontal bone, if you've already watched that, this whole area here is known as the temporal fossa. So this whole space right in here where your muscle known as temporalis is originating. But you can see, kind of starting on that frontal bone and crossing here onto the parietal bone, this is known as your temporal lines. And that drops down towards the temporal bone there. So all along this lateral aspect of the parietal bone, there's a slightly raised ridge. You can kind of see the camera like catching that right now. And that is the outer layer or the outer edge of the muscle known as temporalis and then a fascial covering over top of that. So you might be able to run your fingers along the outside of your head and activate temporalis using clenching of your teeth, teeth pardon me, to feel these temporal lines. So that really is all of the external that we can discuss when it comes to temporal, um, sorry, not temporal, and parietal. Um, but I am just going to take off the cap and look to the inside again. So orienting ourselves, this is the frontal bone. So on the inside we have a frontal crest, and that's turning into this superior sagittal sinus. Um, and it's a groove four, sorry, groove four superior sagittal sinus. The superior sagittal sinus is what it's sitting inside this groove, and that runs straight down the center. So right where that sagittal sinus would be, there is a groove on the inside of those bones um, for this vessel that runs all the way back and then starts going down into the occipital bone. And that really is all the bony landmarks that we are going to discuss when it comes to the parietal bone. And so I will end this video there.